Evening, Alex. I'm going to record this quick because right now my dinner is sitting downstairs getting cold uh, just because I've put this off as long as I possibly could today. So Alex, honestly, I don't really have a whole lot to talk about right now um, just because it's final crunch time and, uh, and so I hadn't really thought about what it is I wanted to discuss today. Um, okay, let's talk about lists. So the other day you were talking about how you wanted to write something for Crack.com um, and while you've been talking about a whole bunch of really serious subjects that you wanted to write about, I've been trying to come up with subjects that are not serious at all um, that maybe you could write uh, comedic articles about uh, at a later point in time. What about superpowers that would be really handy for the daily commute? Now for this list, it would be specifically uh, superpowers that are non-transitory in nature, so like, yeah, flying would be really handy for the daily commute, but that would be kind of cheating. I just mean superpowers that would be handy to make your commute, um, however long it is, a little more enjoyable. So for instance, uh, maybe the Human Torch uh, heating up his coffee so that it doesn't get cold while he's driving to work. Or maybe Static Shock using his strange electromagnetic abilities to project some kind of HD football footage onto the, the windshield of his car or something. Um, I don't know if that would get him pulled over or something, but you know, that, that could be interesting as well. Or what if you did a list of sci-fi fandoms that have gone too far? Uh, for instance, um, the people who have made uh, encyclopedias about what each of the lightsaber colors really signifies. Like, is that terribly important for us in the, in the scheme of watching the films? Do we need to know this? Or what about childhood board games that taught you real-life uh, situations? Like maybe Clue teaching you how to figure out who it was who killed that person in your family. Or then there's Monopoly, which taught you that the person with the most money inevitably wins, um, and you may as well just get used to it and flip the board when you're done. Speaking of Monopoly, I did just hear about um, some research that was done where they had two people play Monopoly and one person was given like more money than the other person and uh, essentially the entire game was stacked so that one person was just at a greater advantage the entire time um, and they sort of looked at it as far as uh, defining um, those who are kind of born into wealth versus those who don't have wealth um, and how those who are born into wealth are, are just better off and uh, and they sort of analyzed the people's responses as to how they won the game and it seemed like the people who had more money um, sort of uh, characterized their, their winning strategies differently than those who uh, had no money who basically said I couldn't win there is no way they had way too much money so I mean that can make an interesting article as well um, maybe just uh, five things in the game of uh, the original game of Monopoly that taught you um, something about life. Or here's a list that may be more appropriate for you given your background uh, in, in writing. Maybe five literary characters that you would really want to have a beer with at a bar, um, and then you could describe why it is you would want to have a beer with them at a bar. So, anyways, Alex, uh, there's a couple of lists uh, that, that might help you come up with other ideas. Um, even though uh, from our last conversation you've already kind of got a working idea. Uh, but anyways, anything I can do to help, uh, just let me know because I would really, uh, I'd like to see uh, you get something published. And so now I'm going to go eat something because I'm super hungry. And yeah, so I will see you tomorrow. I'm looking forward to hearing whatever it is you're talking about. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I'll see you on Monday.